good morning everyone uh, first of all i will like to convey my thanks to our chairperson dr amar for the elaborate uh, introduction and uh, i give my respects to all my chairpersons i will like to thank dr ranjit singh that uh, he has done such a wonderful thing that many people uh, are meeting and listening to the uh, views of the person from all around the world and it is a great great platform and uh, i am thankful to him that he has given me the opportunity today uh, to present before you on a topic uh, which is the very much required in the today's scenarios because uh, the incidences of sexual assaults uh, they are occurring and uh, the offenders they are not being punished so today we are going to talk about this thing that how we should support and manage the victims as well as the survivors of the rape uh, so that uh, there is persecution of all those goes in a good manner and they are put behind the bars so what should be done and how the victims of rape that should be given support so that they lead a normal life so it is seen that after a victim is sexually offended then probably uh, in such situations uh, he is is not having the necessary support required in india as well as in many other countries so today we will talk about this that how this should be done in the best way what is rape what are the sexual offenses and all other things we are going to discuss today and the first thing is well, what is victim and what is survivor uh, who so immediately after the incidents of rape or sexual assault the term, term victim is used and uh, survivor term is used when the person has somewhat coped up with the incidents and short term and long term effects of the incidents we are talking about uh, some use it synonymously but the best way is uh, to ask that by which term the person will be comfortable i will just uh, uh, a, a minute i will make uh, uh, this uh, on my screen uh, the things change if uh, because something is being uh, hidden behind the photographs uh, okay this some okay so the various terms are being used rape uh, sexual violence sexual assault sexual battery sexual abuse and some people say the date rape is not rape because the girl is going but voluntarily on the date but it is not like that the rape is rape whether it occurs on any situation and similarly gang rape that is the more serious crime and rape is more of a legal term and it differs from the definition differs from country to country and usually the sexual violence which we are using in the common terms and uh, what is sexual violence so any sexual at, at, attempt to obtain sexual at, at, or sexual commands or advances or the acts of traffic or otherwise against a person's sexuality by coercion by any person regardless of the relationship of the victim in any setting including but not limited to the home and work so in india the section 375 indian penal code that defines rape so it will differ from country to country maybe but more or less uh, the components remain the same so a man is said to commit rape if he penetrates his penis to any extent into the vagina mouth urethra or anus of a woman or makes her to do so with any other person and inserts to any extent any object or part of the body uh, other penis into the vagina is a urethra or anus of a woman or makes her to do so with any other person
<clears throat> so manipulates any part of the body of a woman so as to cause penetration into the vagina, urethra, anus, or mouth of such woman, or makes her to do so with him or any other person, or applies his mouth to the vagina, anus, urethra of a woman, or makes her to do so with him or any other person under the circumstances falling under any of the following seven descriptions. It means it is not only the vagina, any, any uh, opening of the uh, body. So if offended, uh, that comes in a rape. It is not only the penis, it is any other part of the body or any other thing, any other instrument, if it is used, even then it is considered as rape. Even when it mouth is applied to any of these parts, even then it is a rape. So this should be understood. This is the change from the previous definition when it was only the involvement of the vagina. So basically, sexual intercourse when is against the will. Uh, it is without her consent. She may be willing, but she is not consenting. So even if it is against her will, even if it is without her consent, and if the consent has been obtained in some manner which is not good, so consent has been obtained by putting her or any person in whom she is interested in fear of death or her. With the consent when the man knows that he is not her husband and that her consent is given because she believes that he is another man to whom she is, is or believes herself to be lawfully married. With the consent, when at the time of giving such consent, by reason of unsoundness of mind or intoxication or the administration by him personally or through another of any stupefying or unwholesome substance, she is unable to understand the nature and consequences of that to which she gives consent. With or without her consent, when she is under 18 years of age and when she is unable to complicate consent. And there are Explanations given is this for the purpose of this section, vagina shall also include labia majora. So this is a, again the difference and explanation to his consent means an unequivocal voluntary agreement when the woman by words, gestures, or any form of verbal or non-verbal communication communicates the willingness to participate in the se specific sexual act. And provided that a woman who does not physically resist to the act of penetration shall not, by the reason only of that fact, be regarded as consenting to the sexual activity. And there are two exceptions in this. A medical procedure and intervention shall not constitute rape because sometimes the instruments are inserted. So that is not rape. And exception two is sexual intercourse or sexual acts by a man with his own wife. The wife not being 15 years of age is not considered rape. Though the age of marriage is uh, different, but still the marriages are occurring in India at the younger age. So they have kept this age as 15 years. So what the survivor thinks uh, if such thing happens, or the victim thinks, but, but what is occurring? Uh, there comes a mind that uh, there are so many other people, why this has happened to me? So this is, this is a, a feeling that why why i why myself so that is a big thing a big torture to the person and when i will completely become okay when i will be leading a normal life so leading a normal life is very important how do i get over this so it's a bad thing has happened and uh, she's worried that uh, she does not know actually that how this thing will, it will be over. And she thinks that it is not my fault, but nobody's understanding that it is not my fault and why this all is occurring. And, and she feels in her mind that she will go crazy, she will go mad because so many things are going around her when this happens. Sometimes she tries, or he or she or tries to say that okay, if it has happened, it is a not big deal, but just consoling herself. And I am just imagining this could not happen to me. So she, she sometimes thinks that this is just happening. This is just, this has not happened. 
uh, I am just imagining that this has happened to me. And, and uh, how does survivor feel uh, when some time passes, uh, feels that uh, she is completely numb, she does not understand it. She is in a shock and she cannot continue with the daily life like she was going to the school, going to the college, going to the job, uh, taking care of her normal uh, family life, not taking care of the homework. Um, so she can't do this all now. And she loses self-confidence. She loses self-control. Uh, she feels that why this has happened and she doesn't understand this. And she is constantly having a fear that something bad may happen to me, something worst will happen to me. And uh, she is feeling ashamed that this has happened to you. When she goes out, everybody uh, is uh, looking towards her in a different manner. And um, she feels shame. She feels guilt that probably something uh, wrong I have done. And uh, thinking all this, she is very angry. Maybe not expressing, but inside she is very angry. And she feels that uh, she's alone in this world. So th these are the feelings uh, which, and a lot of anxiety that what will happen next. And uh, she is having nightmares too about all these incidents, about all these bad things. And she has concern for the assailant. And sexual concerns, she is having sexual concerns and post traumatic stress disorder. She's getting back to track that how she will get back to the normal life. Uh, how she should manage this? There, there are some tips that uh, she should be reassured that everything uh, will become okay everything it will be okay, no issue. And victim should have support. Uh, if, if she feels like support can be of the friends, support can be of parents, support can be of anybody um, whom she trusts. And uh, she can take some self-defense classes or stay with the family or friends whom she trusts. And uh, if, if something bad has happened in her life, how she coped up uh, with that? So that should go. And uh, she should take time to grieve and time to adjust and organize the things and uh, try to make their own decision uh, that uh, she should not be dependent because this has happened and now she can't decide about anything. It should not be. She should make her own decisions. She, it should be reassured that she is not a bad person if she is sexually assaulted. It is the assailant who is responsible for the crime. She is not responsible for the crime. Uh, express anger without hurting herself uh, or anybody else. She is angry, but she should express the anger. But in this process, she should not hurt herself or anybody else and put that person in danger. And she should have a person around who, is, who are not always nudging, but they are supporting her. They are supporting that, okay, this has happened. It is uh, okay. It's not your fault. It is the fault of the assailant. And uh, if she's behaving something, uh, it, is, it is not abnormal. And uh, if she can't do this, uh, you can't talk to the people. Uh, probably she should discuss her fears are right in the diary. Uh, she also has sexual concern. Um, sometimes she says that the sexual assault is not a sex. And she should know, yes, this is not a sex. Uh, some start avoiding sex. They say, so no, enough of it. Now, no more of uh, sex in life. And she should understand that uh, uh, she have a 
right to say no to the sex and do it when ready in the mind. Sexual healing takes time. She should know that uh, it takes time. And uh, in this process, if there is a partner and it is an intimate partner, if that intimate partner is very gentle and understands the susceptibilities of the person, then uh, in a very gentle way uh, can help the, help the partner. So, but the therapist, of course, they have their own value and they can be uh, great help in such situations. There is post-traumatic stress disorder in 95% of the women for two weeks and one third for the uh, uh, lifetime. And the repeated thoughts, memories, and nightmares of assault occur in this pro PTSD. And uh, there is avoidance of thoughts, there is difficulty in sleeping, and there is irritation. Uh, so after the person is removed from the crisis situation, then they should be treated for the PTSD. And some reactions may be triggered by events, people, and places. Uh, usually, the similar places, similar people, uh, and the similar events, when they are exposed to that, again, the person feels bad. And sometimes the reactions are even without a trigger, just a thought process, and all this happens. And uh, person has to learn to deal with the fears and learn to deal with the feelings which he is having in, inside him. And in this process, uh, if the person talks to someone, talks to a person who is a positive, if he talk, he's talking to a negative person, probably that will not help, but talking to a positive person will help. So we should know that victim has never to be uh, blamed, even if the perpetrator is an acquaintance. Sometimes uh, she knows someone uh, and they, are, they know each other very good. And if that person, it is equally bad. And maybe the victim was in sexual intimacy uh, with one person and then the other person took the, say that she's like this and that and it took disadvantage of that. And they, so in this case, the victim is not to blame. It is the offender who is to be blamed. Uh, sometimes the victim throws, uh, doesn't know what to do, and uh, doesn't understand, and uh, completely throws and forget to say no. And if the victim was drinking or had, had drugs, even that is not an excuse that uh, the person should be raped. The, uh, the clothing, clothing. So where you say the, uh, if this goes away uh, in long discussions in the social media that the victim had such and such cloth, if he, the person will wear such and such cloth, uh, this thing is going to happen. No, this should not be. So it is not the fault of the victim. It is the fault of the person who himself cannot control. Victim said yes, but later on said no. Maybe um, initially said yes, and uh, later on the person says no. The, it means the no is no, and the thing should stop at that time. Uh, victim should be advised not to take a bath or body body or wash body parts because that will take away the evidence. Not to brush the teeth, eat or drink because that will take away the evidence from the mouth. Not to go to washroom if possible, and not to change clothes as this can destroy or weaken the evidence. Uh, and. Victims must seek medical attention. Get, should get treatment for the injuries. Should get treatment so that she does not become pregnant. So that she does not get the sexually transmitted diseases. Treatment should be done immediately. And to get the samples evidence protected so that the offender can be punished. And she should, uh, the person should report to the police. And if their delay is occurring, the person may forget so some details. So write in detail everything about the incidents in the diary. <clears throat> the, <coughs> the most difficult thing is by prosecutions. The survivor feels that when in the witness box, 
she is being raped all over again sometimes it happens that the person survives the first thing when she has been sexually assaulted but when she is go to the courts she is again asked so many questions like this and that in public <coughs> in front of so many persons that she thinks that she has been raped again and again and this is just one of the case we are said that after the this evidence the person committed suicide so this is very important this has to be taken care of so for this and now there are one stop centers that is coming all over india emergency response and rescue services are being provided uh, by these one stop centers and they provide the medical assistance and assistance to women in lodging the fir and they also are provided counseling and the psychosocial support which is needed a lot at this time because she is disturbed and at the same place the legal aid and counseling is provided that she should go for registering the case so there is a safe shelter there where she can stay and if she wants to talk with any of her friends uh, any of family members any her support persons so there is a video conference facility available there so this one stop centers uh, gradually may have more and more facilities but some some centers have less facilities other centers have more facilities and this is a, a, such one center in uh, uh, south africa when i visited there so uh, uh, there is a first person is a, a, the doctor who was doing the medical legal examination in this day crisis center so there it is known as day crisis center so the is a doctor then there is is, is a second is a uh, of the uh, employee a uh, nurse a uh, forensic nurse of uh, the rape crisis center and another is the police person so who were present at that time in that rape crisis center when i visited the south africa to see the working of that center it, it was a very good center uh, with all the modern facilities with everything good even for the police even for the patients even for the uh, their relatives even for every everyone so everyone could be made comfortable there uh, in their situation and everything can be carried out there so usually these uh, internationally these are providing the crisis centers they are providing services of counseling providing crisis intervention educating and client advocacy they are providing these mainly the four services so uh, counseling so they are giving counseling to the survivors and not only the survivors but also to the near ones of the uh, victims uh, the, there may mother there may father there may be sister brother and there may be children there may be uh, in case of couples so this counseling is also provided to the all the family members uh, to the partner this is very important and in case it is a child is involved child uh, it is a more trauma to a child and uh, it does not understand that what is happening and does not understand the adult terms too so in a, they are given a play therapy uh, so that is very important that how to deal with the children and uh, there are support groups uh, uh, persons who have similarly had some incidences and now they have settled in life and uh, there is a support group uh, who who tells the patient how to uh, the victim that uh, how you have to deal with the life so there is a support group support group can be of uh, different natures to involving different activists and all that so they also do the crisis intervention when the crisis has occurred so they provide a safe place to talk safe place to get the advice safe referrals hospital advocacy trained advocates are there so they trained advocates uh, they help in filing out the paperwork providing community resources giving emotional support and the most important thing is that no person is alone in going through this process and usually what we have seen that uh, um, 
person is uh, called inside for examination, everybody is, is sent outside, and the person is alone in front of so many persons. So probably that is not a good idea. So the person should never be alone when uh, uh, he's going through all this process in this crisis intervention. So simultaneously, it is important that all those who are uh, around him that should be educated. Uh, so students, uh, so they are empowered to talk about uh, if this thing happens uh, and to empower communities to converse uh, so that the, the person is living in the community and unless the community understands that how to deal with, it becomes very difficult. It is a healthy relationship. Uh, boundaries, what are the boundaries, what should be talked, what should not be talked, and what are the responsibility of the bystanders. The community should know this, that if this thing happens, uh, how they should behave. Uh, and youth, families, communities, and professionals, everybody should be educated. Uh, it is not that as a doctor, we know everything. It is not that uh, some we, we know our professional work, but how to communicate in these circumstances, sometimes that is very poor, that we should understand uh, and wish. Then there is important that the advocacy of the client should be done. And uh, because uh, sometimes the uh, victims, the survivors, uh, they don't know that uh, um, they live, may be living alone and uh, uh, the person, if he's living on the rent, they, they may be thrown out of that place, that you are not a good person, you go out of that. Now it is not the part. So to provide safe housing to the survivor, providing employment, if she's not already employed, if she's employed, she does not lose that employment and she gets the legal resources. And the, the sense of stability uh, and should be developed in the survivors and so that they become resilient and they become the product they remain the productive members of the society if they are not they become the productive members of the society it is very important so i will say that the kind words can be very short and easy to speak but their echoes are truly endless and uh, now I will talk about something uh, in foreign country about sexual assault response teams. Um, so they should be formed in those countries where these are not present. And these are the community-based teams that coordinates the response to the victims of the sexual assault. And the team usually comprises of sexual assault nurse examiners, hospital persons, sexual assault victim advocates, law enforcement, prosecutors, judges, and any other professionals with a specific interest in assisting victims of the sexual assault. So all those who are, who are involved in dealing with the sexual assault from A to Z, so all those persons should be in this the sexual assault response team. And then there are the sexual assault nurse examiners, a concept which is coming. Uh, it, it has started in many countries of the world. Uh, it has and it will gradually come to the other parts of the uh, world too. And sex assault nurse examiner is a registered nurse who has received special training so that they can provide comprehensive care to the sexual assault victims. And in addition, they are able to conduct a forensic examination and provide expert testimony if the case goes to the trial. In India, these are medical officers are doing the examination Usually this is done by a registered medical practitioner. Uh, usually the victims are, it has been seen that victims are more comfortable with the uh, female medical officers. And uh, if it is not feasible, then it should be present, done in the presence of a female. And uh, under BOXVAC, a female child adolescent victim must be examined by a female medical officer. So in this, the child is considered any person below the age of the 18 years. So below the 18 years, so that it is a female victim, then the female medical officer should examine the person. So 
from the very from so many years we have been trying to advocate the right things in 2006 uh, we had organized a workshop to uh, for the re victim examination it's a long years uh, back um, and persons from San, uh, there are so many persons here virginia so she's the mother of the forensic nursing science and uh, the person on the left uh, i am just forgetting uh, her name it is a long time back but at that time she had done 50 5500 a victim examination uh, uh, so her name is jamie i am getting back her name jamie Ferrer, uh, at that time and she is still practicing uh, this uh, forensic nursing science and uh, the person on the extreme right is the forensic scientists who are involved uh, along with in this in these teams so why we should do the examination so that is important that when sexual offense is committing, the evidence of crime is present on the body, and then if victim is examined properly and this evidence is collected properly, this will lead to successful prosecution of the offender. And if person is falsely accused, he will be exonerated. So that is why you see it is very very important that examination should be done. In if there is a falsely accused, even that will survive. Uh, that will be exonerated. And if there is offender, that will be prosecuted and will get the sentence. When the examination should be, it's very important question that when the examination should be done. So the, it, it should be done as early as possible. Otherwise, valuable evidence will be lost. And so patient, if comes directly to the hospital, then the examination can be done. When the patient is brought for uh, examination by the police with the request letter, then it can be done. Or if the court orders uh, for the examination. So under all the circumstances, examination should not be refused. It means in any case, a person comes across uh, to any person or directly, the person should be examined. If the person is accompanied by a police officer, take the request letter, the person has brought, uh, take the signature of the person who has brought, and then ask the person to wait outside. And police officer should be instructed to take precaution, which should be told to him. And now, what are the important things when we are examining the victim? It is the consent, which is very important. Uh, the person should be examined by a female doctor as far as possible, or in the presence of a female. Uh, so we do the external examination, we do the genital examination, and we preserve the sample. So these are the important aspects of this examination. So consent, all of you understand the consent, I think, but just briefly repeating it, that I understand that in addition to consent for medical examination and treatment given to the doctor, I also give consent to medical examination for evidence of sexual assault, which may be used in forensic investigation. I understand that this examination will include the collection of reference samples and the DNA profiles of the collected samples may be stored in a confidential forensic DNA database. I also understand that I may read the consent at any time or any portion of the examination. So this is very important. All the medical officers should understand that initially person has given consent, but she may withdraw the consent at any time and then that examination has to be stopped at that time. Writing, in writing, that person has withdrawn that consent. <coughs> Any information submitted will be treated as highly confidential and for the sole purpose of the criminal investigation. Better if it is written, always informed consent patient should be told everything and she understands this and then she gives the consent. It is important, better if it is witnessed, somebody else is also present when she is giving consent. And try to give the consent at any time of examination. This should be understood both by the survivor as well as by the examining team. Separate consent, if done for research purpose, if anywhere identity of the victim is to be revealed, but um, as far as possible, I will say that identity should never be revealed. Even, uh, even if she has given the consent, then 
even it should not be done. Probably now the laws are more stringent about this. As if we photograph the victim, one photograph can tell more than what the 1,000 words will describe the condition, the condition of undress, how, how, what are the uh, emotions on the face, what are the, what is the body language. Uh, so everything is being explained in the photographs. And later on, it helps in the court also to identify. It has to show the appearance of the victim and condition of her clothing and inches can also be photographed along with the scale. And bite marks, if any, must be photographed at right angle along with the scale. What precautions should be taken? The victim and assailant should be examined as early as possible, otherwise valuable evidence will be lost. Evidence should be properly collected. Evidence should be uh, preserved. Evidence should be documented. Evidence at crime scene should also be collected, preserved, and documented. Evidence should be forwarded as early as possible. So these are the, usually in our area, uh, these are the forms where the examination is being done. It may be different in uh, uh, different states of India, but you use any format, but the complete description is very important. But the, fully all the details of the patient, their identification marks, their consent, uh, general examination, uh, all genital examination, all the samples which are taken, uh, the signatures of the victim, the signatures of the person who is coming with, and signatures of the medical officer. So all these things are there. And if the injuries are present, they are also recorded on it. And all these injuries are marked on the pictorial diagram. So how the, this examination should be done, I will go in a little bit detail uh, on, on, on this, that uh, uh, fill in the preamble, take the consent, note the identification marks, note the general condition of the victim and general physical examination, describe the injuries. And our examination, the sexual assault examination kit, if that is used, that will be very good. Now, the various state governments are having their own kits. Uh, otherwise, this is a kit which is prepared by the Sihel uh, NGO, so that can be used, or uh, any kit. Uh, so this is having all the necessary things which are required for the examination, all the swabs are to be taken, all, all the invalids, everything, uh, the report form, and everything is there in this kit. And this is the sexual assault examination kit in, uh, in South Africa. So this is more or less same, there is a better packaging and this is having all the required forms uh, which, is, which are to be filled. And uh, first thing is removing the clothing of the patient. Ask the patient to remove the clothes herself. You should never remove the clothes of the patient. And never try to remove the clothes yourself, but can offer help if requested. Always respect the dignity of the patient and provide her with screen or bed sheet or bone partition when she is removed. So this is a... Uh, place uh, this is an envelope where the uh, clothes can be put. So, after ask her to remove suit, chunni, sari, blouse, top browsers, shoes, everything, what's our present standing over a big paper sheet and give her a gown to wear, ask to remove the panties underwear and not to remove the sanitary pad if they, that is that will be done at a later stage. If there are any clothing stain or torn, that should be taken care of. And a tampoon, if present, is collected while examining the private parts and cover the sticky side of the sanitary pad with back sheet so that envelope is not soiled. Do dry the clothing in sunshade before packing. So this is the clothing evidence. All samples uh, are, are, uh, are collected in this bag after they are dried. Uh, then, so the swabs are taken from the different parts of the body, from the mouth, and uh, blood sample is collected, evidence on scalp hair is collected, swabs from under the nails are collected, finger cut, fingernail cutting is collected. So uh, swabs from the body, where attacker lick are set, are big, are where he spills the semen, and stains of dried blood are present. Uh, stains of dried seminal stains are present, samples of pubic hair, from anal area and from the genital area. If 
from the oral cavity how the sample should be taken, examine the mouth and write down the injuries and other findings. Take swab, swab along with the outer gum line of teeth of upper jaw. Take swab along the inner gum line or teeth of upper jaw. Take swab along the outer gum line of teeth of upper jaw. Take swab along the inner gum line of the. If you cannot take so many samples, but it is better to take sample rather than not to take any sample, or rather to take, uh, if not possible, many samples. And take swabs from inside the cheek, take swabs from palate, take swabs from under the tongue, dry all the swabs. This is very, very important that all the swabs should be dried before they are sent. So pack it, never moisten the swab while taking samples from the oral cavity because these are already wet inside. So all these swabs which are taken after drying, then they are put in these swabs. Then the blood sample, uh, it, it's collected to obtain a DNA profile of the victim. And in drug, at a sample should be collected before the potassium oxalate potassium fluoride sample. And uh, you should know that there are drugs which sometimes given to the uh, victim. Uh, they are frequently used drugs. Uh, Rohypnol and gamma hydroxybutyrate incapacitate the victim, uh, usually given mixed with the alcohol. And it produces drowsiness, impaired motor loss, and memory loss. And so that the person does not understand that what has happened. She, person gives consent, person gives uh, uh, approval, just done knowing that what is happening to the person. So if the person has been given this drug, if within 48 hours the victim comes, collect the blood and urine sample. If within 42 to 72 hours, then collect only the urine samples. And so this will tell about the drugs if they are being given to the patient. And uh, 10 ml of blood, 10 ml of urine bit stain sample, and label all, all the samples which are taken must be labeled and put in the biohazard bag. So these are the... Uh, already in the kit, these are present. From the body, document the injuries, collect biological evidence, and the collect the foreign material. Uh, from the victim head, if there are matted head, head hair, head hair combing, you should take, and the reference head you should take. <clears throat> so all these are in the kit. So swabbing under the nail because the person may have scratched. So there had, may be a struggle, and then the offenders, blood, and epithelial cells may be present under the nail. But just moisten the pointed tip swab with one drop and not moist it by dipping as it will dilute the material and will wash away the material. And one swab from one hand should be taken. And uh, if any foreign material is present on the body, that should also be taken. And uh, the sterile pastula should be used to dislodge these things. So fingernail cutting should be taken. And Sterile scissors should be used for this and put, should be put on a catch paper. And if there is a matted body here, that should be, uh, first the body should be examined and then these should be, and it may be matted by blood or semen and sterile scissor is used and put it on a catchment paper. Paper is folded and labeled and collection of body fluid deposits. If it is done for forensic DNA analysis, never use the same swab to collect body fluid from two places. Uh, any blood stain, vagina fruit cells on the shaft of penis, salivary stains, semen ejaculated on her body, semen due to drainage, and swabs for saliva. Saliva due to kissing of the face, lips, and air lobules and neck, licking on the cheeks, breast, and areola. Saliva due to sucking on the breast, saliva on the vulva due to cunnilingus, saliva on the shaft penis and scrotum due to ophalatio, and moisture with one drop of sterile water and swab the area in a circular motion, applying light pressure. And from the bite marks, saliva due to bite marks may, um, should, if may present should be taken. Moisten with uh, one drop of sterile water and swab the area in a circular motion, applying for light pressure from inside the bite mark area, over the bite mark area, and around the bite mark area. And wherever there is ejaculation, whether it is on the abdomen, on the face, or on the inner surface of the thighs, and uh, if the pubic hair are shared, a very small ejaculate is present in this area, collect with moisture swab. And here in the pubic area should also be collected, put in a catch paper under the buttons and look for the matted hair. If they are not very short, cut the matted hair with scissors, put this hair in a catch paper, calm the pubic area and collect the loose hair. 
additional common with blood fingers can also flag the loose hair and never use tweezers to pull out the hair. Patient may prefer to pull the hair herself and pull out about 15 hairs to the three at a time with the glad fingers. This will act as a reference here. So all these are put in this in the well and uh, they are sent after labeling. And if collection of the evidence from the anolactal area, so this area may be involved. It is helpful even penetration has not taken place as semen may be present in the perennial and perianal region. Semen may also present here due to leakage. Evidence from this region must be done prior to examination and collection of evidence from the genital region. Uh, for this, the symptoms are prone each chest position may be used. And carefully swap the anus, slightly extending the, to the anal canal, ask the patient to relax so that taking a swab from rectal canal is easy. Apply lateral traction to the buttock and carefully swap the anal canal and rectum. So collection of evidence from the genital area. So this is very, very important. I will say that this is the most important. It doesn't mean that other things are not important, but usually most of the time we find the maximum evidence in this area. And for DNA analysis we take, we take the vaginal swabs, we take the tampons, and different positions can be used, dorsal recumbent position, lithotomy position. For younger patients, frog like position is good. Allow the victim a comfortable position as far as possible without obstructing the examination and evidence collection. You must not say that this is the only position. There are different positions wherever the patient victim is comfortable. So that position should be used. So this is a chair very good for the examination, especially for the children. So this is a, a USA examination of the victims of the um, sexual assault. So you, you see everything is there, toys are there, the changing dress is there, everything is there. And uh, even the colposcope is there, computers are there. So everything can be recorded. Uh, external examination should start from the vulva and should be done earlier so that there is no accidental loss leakage of the body fluids. Sample must be collected from here for the saliva, semen, or blood, and thoroughly swab the external surfaces of labia majora, labia minora, and clitoral uh, hood applying gentle pressure. External examination of the vestibule with anterior, another moisture swab. So all these labia minora, clitoris area, periurethral area, urethral area, posterior foreshad, post and amicleus, that should be examined. And if the tampon is present, that should be taken at this stage and uh, ask the patient to remove it and place it in the box meant for it. And then you start with the internal genital sample taking. Insert a sterile water lubricated vaginal speculum warm to the body heat and take samples with a dry swab, a vaginal ward from the posterior fornix and the area surrounding the cervical button from the cervical os inside of the cervical os rotate the swab 360 degree to collect as much as possible the mucus plug. So all these are dried and that they are collected here. Dry all the swabs, uh, if there may be a swab dryer, uh, otherwise place the swabs in a swab guard box and now clothes must be dried and put everything in its proper envelope, put seal and put all the samples and apply the temper proof seal and then exactly you have examined for the injuries, but the minor injuries should not be forgotten uh, inside the vagina. So you can, toledon blue dye can be applied with a swab and wash with 1% acetic acid spray. It will stain the minor injuries, which are not visible to the naked eye. So this is very important, toledon blue dye. So that is not difficult to get and acetic acid spray is easily available. So this, the minor injuries, which are usually not visible to the naked eye, that will become visible and document these injuries in the report and photograph these injuries with the help of the colposcopic camera. And so you see with the help of colposcopic camera, the injury inside, uh, they come on your screen and you can record it. Uh, so then everything much we are done, you should hand over to a police person and maintaining proper chain of custody is very important. Hand over all the collected samples to the company constable, take proper uh, receipt. If not accompanying constable, send it to the concerned police station and hand over one copy to the ML under receipt. Always give the uh, one sample of seeds labeling it. So this is, uh, these are the forensic nurses in USA on my visit there to the, their 
sent uh, uh, where the press industries are examining. So this is a police official receiving the uh, kit after this examination, uh, uh, having all the samples in it. So this was the pre-victim examination centers in the USA when we studied uh, about, uh, this is about 10 years back, I think. And when all these are the three forensic nurses uh, who are who are done the examination, and this is their examination chamber. Of course, this is done uh, under the supervision of a medical officer, but mainly they are examining and collecting the samples and uh, writing and documenting everything. So, so, so uh, the in USA, my country uh, was rewarded uh, for working on this, uh, especially the forensic nursing science in 2007, so this award was given. So I would like to conclude that do not blame the victim or the survivor at any time. One stop centers are very useful. These should be established wherever this is present. That's very good. Wherever these are not present, uh, these should be developed. Uh, examination should be done in a professional way. The sample should be collected properly. Media trials should not be held and forensic nurses should be introduced in India gradually, especially the sexual assault nurse examiners. Persons should be around who can support the victim and uh, survivor should not hesitate to talk about incidents and express, uh, you can do exercise, yoga, meditation, whatever helps to reduce the stress of the survivors, uh, should, should have a balanced diet and a good sleep cycle and the best thing is she should become creative, becoming creative. When a person becomes creative, uh, that reduces a lot of stress. And uh, so person can have time out if he's not feeling good and uh, she got involved in reading and writing. Uh, she should be able to release her anger in a positive way, like just uh, throwing the pillow on the bed or anywhere, not hurting anyone. A victim should hug uh, whomever she loves mother, sister, Arab. So that gives a lot of relief of stress. The hugging gives a lot of stress relief. She should be made to feel safe. So these are the references of my paper. And uh, in India, uh, we treat the person like as a baby, but sometimes that uh, takes away the dignity and make her a victim or a, a survivor. Just don't worship baby, but make sure that every woman around you is safe and a society for prevention of injuries and harmful punishment are working towards this. indo Pacific Academy of Forensic Nursing Science are working towards this. Have become the members of these societies and uh, give your assistance, play your part to make the society in a better way. And uh, whatever you are doing about this, uh, you can uh, report this in this journal. This is an index journal. This is a peer reviewed journal. Uh, there are no submission charges in it. Uh, you can submit your articles. You can submit your research works. You can submit your review articles or even case reports. Or you can write the letter to the editor if you are feeling some, something in your mind and you want to share it with the uh, scientific people. Uh, please do send the articles. There are no submission charges on it. And uh, let us manage as gently as possible. And uh, so that the experience of the survivors and victims is very good. So that the persons who are persecuted, they are exonerated. So that the persons who have done this crime, uh, they are successfully prosecuted and they go behind the bars. Thank you very much.